Well, good morning. Good to see everybody today. We have got a, uh, a great crowd together and uh, good to see. Hi, Tommy. <clears throat> Just saw, saw some folks we haven't seen in, uh, in quite a while. Uh, good to have you all with us today. Before I forget, I want to wish all of our mothers and all of our grandmothers Happy Mother's Day. You know, the first time that I preached, it was our, my first full-time year uh, for this congregation, uh, I preached on Mother's Day and forgot it was Mother's Day. <clears throat> I am still healing up <laughs> from that beating that I took that day. And what's funny, I don't remember what I preached last week, but I remember my last four sermons on Mother's Day. <laughs> I preached on Hannah, I preached on Naomi, and I preached to young men about how they can honor their mothers, and I preach to men how they can honor their wives. So, you know, it's, it's played a role in my mind about Mother's Day. So, happy Mother's Day, and we are glad that uh, so many of you guys are with us today. As you can tell from the slide that's behind us, we are going to continue with some thoughts about Mother's Day by looking at another mother today. And today, I want us to take a look at the mother of our Lord, the mother of Jesus, physical mother of Jesus and that's Mary. You know, I, I don't want to take time today to try to venerate her, so please don't misunderstand what I want to do with Mary. I, I want to present her to us as a character that we find in Scripture that has an awful lot to teach us. And so I hope to communicate some principles, some, uh, some examples for us to apply to our lives, and I, I believe that we'll find for, bo for both men and women uh, young and old, that there are some amazing lessons that we can learn uh, from this, uh, this amazing character that we find in Scripture. So if you have your Bibles, if you would, please open up to the Gospel of Luke. I want to take a look at Luke chapter 1. We're going to start reading in verse 26. Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Now, most of the time we read this passage uh, around Christmas time. So we're going to kind of change the context a little bit, and I want for you to think about uh, this from a, from a mother's point of view. So verse 26, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. He came in and he said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was. The angel said, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered and said, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age, and she has called, been barren um, through the sixth month. She will have child. Nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. Well, what, a, what an amazing passage that we read about there in the life of Mary. And as we think about some lessons that we can gain for her from her, I'd like for us to consider this first point this morning, and that is that Mary was faithful in her humility. You know, Mary, of all of the things that happened to her throughout her life, and we're going to just take a look at four of these, we're going to find out that Mary was faithful throughout. She's going to be faithful to her God. She's going to be faithful to her own self, to her own principles. And she's going to be faithful to those who are around her. So let's take a look at, uh, at some of these ideas. First of all, Mary was faithful in her humility. As we were reading through this text, I want for you to notice some of the amazing things that happens to Mary here. First of all, the angel Gabriel comes, and, and I, I don't know how he, I don't know if he just appeared to her out of thin air or if he walks up on her, but he comes to her and he says, greetings, favored one. Now, I don't know about you, but I have never come face to face with an angel, and I have for sure never had one said, greetings, favored one. 
So, you know, this is a pretty amazing event that's taking place here. He continues with some information that's going to happen with Mary in the very near future. He says, you're going to have a child. And the child is, you're going to be with child through the Holy Spirit of God. That child is going to be called the Son of God, the Son of the Most High. And that is who your child will be. And he will rule over the house of David. You know, what an amazing event for Mary. And what I'd like to just for us to notice here is that Mary just stays humble throughout this. You know, you would think if that kind of thing had happened to, to me or you, we might have been thinking to ourselves, you know, of all of the women on the planet that have ever lived, God picked me. I think it would have been very easy to kind of become arrogant a little bit or a little bit proud. But Mary does not. Mary stays humble throughout. Matter of fact, Mary every now and then will pop up in the Gospels. She doesn't play really a significant role, but just three or four times she pops up. She's mentioned in the text. And every time she shows up, she is playing a role of humility. Every time. And can you imagine when she stood at the foot of the cross while her son hang, hung and died? Can you imagine the humility that it must have taken? to just stand there and watch her son suffer through what he did. You know, at the end of this text, if you look at verse 38, as Mary responds to the angel, she says, Behold the bond slave of the Lord. And the first principle I think that we need to learn from Mary is just simply this, that we need to be people who are humble. And, and you know, <clears throat> pride likes to, likes to show up in our lives. <clears throat> We get to thinking about our education, for example. We get to thinking about maybe we got a great business going. We get to thinking about uh, how, how everybody likes us, you know, or all of those various things. And Satan would like for us to just become arrogant, would like for us to become proud. Something I believe that we all suffer with time to time. We need to deal with those things in our lives. I tell you, as we look through Scripture, we find over and over and over again the importance of remaining humble. In Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2, the proverb writer will write, When pride comes, then comes dishonor, but with the humble is wisdom. And again in 29, 23, a, pro a man's pride will bring him low, but a humble spirit will obtain honor. You know, over and over in the Proverbs and in the Psalms and the book of Ecclesiastes, these ideas of humility are brought out over and over and over again. Remember, Jesus in his teaching also taught us to be humble. Matter of fact, Jesus will say, you know who the greatest in the kingdom of heaven is? The one that is your slave, the one that is the servant. That is the greatest in the kingdom. And of course, we are familiar with what James had to say about humility. Humble yourselves before God and he will lift you up. Our first lesson from Mary this morning, we need to be faithful in our humility. Second thing I'd like for us to notice about Mary was that Mary was faithful in her obedience. You know, I think it's interesting that as the angel talks to her, she does ask one question of clarity. How is it that this can be? But she's not in argu argumentative mode here. She's just asking, how, how can this happen? And the angel says, look, you're going to be the mother of the Son of God. And Mary just says, okay. Mary accepts this with almost a yes, Lord, whatever you want from me. Matter of fact, if you look back at verse 38, behold the bond save of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. In other words, Lord, let it happen. I, I am your bond slave and I, I will in humble submission obey your will. And then it's interesting as you watch Jesus be born, you remember the angel comes and, and warns him and says, hey, you need to take the child to Egypt. Mary and Joseph load up and off they go. And then the angel will come to him in Egypt and said, hey, you need to get home. They pack up and off they go, back home. Throughout the ministry of Jesus, as Mary is showing up, you can see her humble submission in obedience to God's will in her life. And once again, as she stands at the foot of the cross and she sees her one and only, her firstborn son, the one and only son of God, on that cross, she humbly says, yes, Lord, he is yours. We too need to be submissive and be obedient to the will of God. 
You know, we say this a lot around here, but this book right here is so important for us. This book teaches us and trains us what we need to do in life. It teaches us how we are to live. And brothers and sisters, we need to be, we need to be digging in here. And we need to be reading this word and we need to be saying to the Lord, Yes, Lord, what you want for my life is what I'm willing to give. Yes, Lord, we need to be in obedience. Obedient submission to him. Jesus will say in John 14, 15, if you love me, obey me. Very simple statement that the Lord makes. But so powerful, so powerful a lesson from Mary. Number three, Mary was faithful in spite of the difficulties. I tell you, as you take a look at this text and kind of follow Mary throughout the Gospels, you're going to find out that she lives through a ton of adversity, a ton of suffering. You know, I was, I was visiting with someone before we started, and I, I know that Mother's Day is difficult for mothers. Matter of fact, we have some who are not here this morning because it's just too difficult <laughs> to meet together on Mother's Day. I understand that. But what I want for us to consider is Mary was faithful in spite of her difficulties. The first thing I'd like for us to consider is when Mary was, was with child, when Mary was pregnant, and she's there walking around Nazareth, do you think uh, some of the little old ladies in the market, sorry, I'm saying the little old ladies, but you know, the people in the market, <laughs> do you suppose they made fun of her? Oh, there's that Mary. We know that you're not married, and here you are showing with child. You know, Nazareth was only about 400 folks, so she probably knew everybody in town. Did you also know that Nazareth was kind of a, of a it was almost one family. Everything they did was community in Nazareth. There was, a, there was a community vineyard, and we, when April and I were there a, a year ago, we got to walk through that vineyard, and it kind of surrounded the, the edge of town. And it was a vineyard that everybody worked, and then they would all harvest those grapes. And in the middle of town was a community wine press. And they, the archaeologists have found it. It, it uh, dates back to the time of Jesus. And it's a, just a great big rock vat. It's about this long. It's about this deep. And the, the account that uh, historians gave was that the kids, when they, when they harvested the grapes, the kids would get in and tread the, the grapes, and then it would flow off the edge into a, into a big vat where they would catch it. And isn't it interesting to think about Jesus as a young man, as a boy, in that wine vat, trampling out the grapes. That's the kind of community that he lived in. And now... Mary is back. She is there. Everybody knows her. And I would suggest to you that that was a very difficult time for her. I want for us to consider one other event in the life of Mary. Think about after Jesus was born. So the angel comes and says, hey, you guys need to get out of here because Herod's going to bring havoc on the children. So they make a trek to Egypt. The angel comes, they come back. Can you imagine what would have happened when they came back from Egypt and there in Bethlehem and its vicinity, Herod had killed every child two years and younger. Did you know that they were from Bethlehem? That was their hometown. That's where their family lived. Do you suppose that they lost some family members in that massacre? I suggest you probably so because that's where they went to register because that's where they're from originally was Bethlehem. Boy, what great pain and anguish to meet someone on the road sometime or in a home and realize that their child had been killed because of the child that you brought into the world. I suggest to you that was a time of difficulty for her, a time of, of, of heartache. As she had to deal with some of those things. And you know, throughout Jesus' ministry, again, as we see these little events pop up where Mary's in the picture, Mary is not playing a significant role. As a matter of fact, Jesus is kind of downplaying family throughout. Jesus is emphasizing disciples. He is emphasizing the teaching that he is giving. No longer emphasizing mom. No, no longer emphasizing brothers and sisters. But emphasizing his teaching. 
Remember when he was in Nazareth, Jesus was in Nazareth, and he was teaching, and the, the crowd came from him. He said, where did he get all this stuff? Isn't his mother Mary? And aren't his brothers with us? And his sisters? And if you look at verse 5 of John chapter 7, it will say, and they took offense at him. They're in the town that he grew up in. And Mary gets to endure these difficulties. And then, of course, we've already mentioned at the foot of the cross, as Mary looks up and sees her son hanging on that tree, and once again, historians would suggest to us that he was beaten so badly you probably could not have even recognized his form on that cross. And there's Mary looking her son, her firstborn son, on that tree. You know, when Mary took, Mary and Joseph took Jesus to Jerusalem, there was a man there by the name of Simeon in the temple, and he will tell Mary, a sword will pierce your soul. It did, didn't it? I believe throughout her entire life. But here's my point about all that. Mary was faithful. In spite of all of those difficulties, in spite of all of those times when she could have given up and got bad and left... <laughs> She doesn't. She stays faithful to her God. She stays faithful to her convictions. And she stays faithful even, I believe, to us as she continues to teach. Mary was faithful in spite of difficulties. John, uh, Jesus in John chapter 16, verse 33, will say, In this world you will have tribulation, but do not fear. In this world, we will have tribulation. It is a difficult place at times. But we need to remain faithful. And I also re was reminded of James chapter 1, verse 2, where James says, Consider it all joy, my brothers, when you face various trials. You see, the end of the story is that the Messiah died on that cross, yes, but that he was raised from the dead. And you know where we find, the last time we find Mary in Scripture, you know where she's at? <laughs> Acts chapter 1, waiting for the church to begin. Mary was faithful in spite of difficulty. And the final point this morning is this, Mary was faithful to her calling. I want for us to again think about what Mary was called to do, what was Mary asked to do. You know, really it was a task that is beyond imagination, really. She was asked to raise and give birth to the Son of God. She was going to give birth to the Savior of the world, and her responsibility was to teach him and train him and keep him safe. Oh, for about 30 years or so. And then she has to let the religious elite of her day challenge him and try him and embarrass him and talk bad about him and mock him. They will then unjustly accuse him. They will try him unfairly in a court that should have never met. They will convict him of a crime he did not commit with malice. They will beat him and scourge him and kill him in the worst way imaginable. What a task! But Mary was faithful to that calling. Well, let's think for just a minute about our calling as well. You know, Peter in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know, Friday morning, I, uh, I had breakfast with one of my lifelong friends. He happens to be sitting right here, he and his wife and daughter and son-in-law. He came up. Uh, he's been working at Petty John uh, with the Sojourners. And we had breakfast Friday, and my brother was here, and we were just kind of sitting around the table talking. And we got to talking about the, the horrible situation that our country is in and how ungodly things are becoming, and they just get worse and worse and worse. And Jim looked at me and he said, Lane, he said, do you know why? Do you know why things are so bad? I said, why, Jim? He said, because of us. Do you know that? 
Because we haven't opened our mouths the way that we need to. Because we have not, as this verse says, we have not proclaimed the excellencies of him who has called us out of that darkness into his marvelous light. He was 100% right. Brothers and sisters, it is an important fact that we live in a world of darkness. But we have been called out of that darkness into the marvelous light, and we have been called to proclaim the excellencies of our Lord and our Master. And I guess my question for us, are we being faithful to that? Are we being faithful to that? Are we being faithful in our humility? Are we being faithful in our obedience? Are we being faithful in spite of the difficulties that we have? And there are plenty. And are we being faithful in our calling to be the children of God in a dark, depraved world? Brothers and sisters, let's make some commitments today to be faithful, to be faithful to Jehovah God, to be faithful to our own selves with the decisions that we've made and to be faithful to one another as brothers and sisters in Christ. If we can help you in any way, if you need to change some things today, we want to give you an opportunity to do that. If you need to be baptized into Christ, we have a bapt uh, baptistry sitting right there. It takes 15 minutes to fill that thing up. We'd be more than happy to assist you with that this morning. If we can help you in any way, would you please come while we stand and sing?